Welcome back to another episode of the Believe in Minnesota Football podcast, hosted by me, Tony Lieberts. As always, you can follow me on Twitter at Tony Liebert and Instagram and TikTok at Tony underscore Liebert. That is T-O-N-Y-L-I-E-B-E-R-T. For today, we will be previewing the Gophers Week 10 matchup at Huntington Bank Stadium against the Illinois Fighting Illini. And we'll uh, touch a little bit on the 2024 schedule release on the exact opponents and dates for the Gophers 12 games in 2024 have been officially released. So uh, we'll talk it all we'll talk about all of it now on this week's episode or this day's episode. So Gophers 2:30 p.m. kickoff on Big Ten Network versus Illinois in week 10. Two and a half point favorites uh, over under of 43 points. Another tough game in the Big Ten West. Um, there this year, really, there's no gimmies in the conference, as we've seen. Uh, Northwestern really exceeding expectations with a win over Maryland last week. Nebraska's tough, and obviously the uh big three with Illinois, Wisconsin, and us. Um, it's a it's a tough conference or a tough division right now uh, with a lot of pesky teams and Illinois is no different. Don't let their three and five record fool you. It's a good football team. So um, they open the season with a 30-28 win at home versus Toledo, a team that is now, I believe, eight and one. Um, but one of the best uh, power five or group of five teams in the country. Uh, very good team. So that is a hard-fought win against a borderline top 25 team, in my opinion. And then they lost at Kansas 23-34, a very good Kansas team. We obviously know um, that uh, beat Oklahoma um, and very talented team that's uh, top 15 in the country. Uh, maybe might even play in the Big 12 championship. You never know. But So they opened the season with two tough games, and then it hosted Penn State. So that's Three really tough games start the season. So they start the season one and two, and then they host Florida Atlantic and win in a close game. Tom Herman now clo- coaching that team. No gimme there. So that's a tough start to the season uh, before Big Ten uh, play officially is underway. And then they go at Purdue and lose to the uh, their former defensive coordinator, Ryan Walters, on uh, 19-44. And then they host Nebraska, lose 7-20. to in a dogfight, a win at Maryland, 27-24, and a lose at home versus Wisconsin two weeks ago, 21-25, and now they are coming off a bye week, which is very interesting. We'll touch on it in a little bit, but they're a very good football team um, that is still very tough to deal with. We all know Brett Bielema has been the Gophers' kryptonite through uh, a couple of regimes now, so um, we all know he's a good coach as much as he's very hateable. Um, he's, he's a very good football coach, and he has Illinois in a good position. They're a talented team, and uh, this is a tough game um, that, in all honesty, it scares me as someone that's rooting for the Gophers to win. But, yeah, Brett Bielema now in his third year as head coach in Champaign, um, and the studs on this team, just quick rundown, they got Jerjon Newton, who will be missing the first half. We'll touch on that a little bit due to a targeting penalty, but one of the best players in the whole conference, probably a uh, first-round pick defensive tackle, Isaiah Williams, one of the most underrated wide receivers in the country. Uh, Ole Miss transfer Luke Altmeyer at QB. They got uh, Tavion Nicholson, who's an NFL-level cornerback, and then they got in the running back position replacing Chase Brown. They got Aiden Fagan and Reggie Love the third. So, um, if the Gophers want to win the Big Ten West, these are the games they have to win. Uh, we know that the Gophers have lost both games against Brett Bielema in the last two years. So uh, P.J. Fleck wants to beat him for the first time. The Gophers want to beat him for the first time. And it's not going to be easy. So um, it's some big storylines. Uh, year three of the Brett Bielema era, era. They fired Lovey Smith following the COVID year. And they made a big splash hiring him. Um, he was off for a few years after getting fired from Arkansas. That clearly just not an SEC guy. He's a Big Ten guy through and through. 
And uh, in year one, they went five and seven, but uh, it, the program was in the right direction because they had uh, that big win against Penn State on the road. And then last year, they went eight and five with a bowl game loss to Mississippi State. I believe that was a it was, they were in a better bowl game than the Gophers, that's for sure. It was, I want to say it was one of those like early New Year's Day ones um, or New Year's Eve ones. I forget what it was called, what that game's called, but. Um, it might have been the one that they've replaced the Outback Bowl with, but that's besides the point. So now, now it's year three. That's often the time for a coach to break out. That was when PJ Fleck broke out, obviously. And uh, they brought in Ole Miss transfer Luke Altmeyer, who was a highly touted guy coming out of high school, a very talented quarterback, um, all potential All American defense tackle Jerjon Newton. Um, those are two building blocks of very talented players. They got Isaiah Williams. So there, there is. I was pretty high on this this Illinois team heading into the year. I thought they should have been the second favorite to win the Big Ten West. Um, they, they were very talented, top to bottom. Um, but that early road loss to Kansas kind of set them behind heading into the Big Ten season. Few injuries. Um, and they've just they've hit a gauntlet, and uh, it, it, they've hit the they hit the meat and potatoes of their uh of their season and it hit them back and but now they got a buy so uh that's why this game makes me a little nervous because this is a talented team and they have an extra week to prepare now and they're still a very live hungry dog underdog in this game but so um Maybe why I was a little wrong on this Illinois team and maybe why they've struggled is they had to replace a lot from last year's team. Um, quarterback Tommy DeVito is now in the New York Giants. Uh, Chase Brown is now in the NFL. Their star running back from last year who was second in the Doak Walker Award. Uh, I believe he might have been first team All-American then. I, I don't, can't remember if they put two running backs on the first team, but uh, the consensus second best running back in the country, which is crazy because Mo Ibrahim was better than him, but um, and then they had to replace their defensive coordinator, Ryan Walters. They had one of the best defenses in the country last year. Uh, Devin Witherspoon, they also had to replace. I totally forgot about him. He was like the fifth overall pick. So uh, that's three studs in your defensive coordinator that you have to replace. So that's that's a lot, especially at a program like Illinois. We kind of saw it in 2019 when the Gophers lost uh, Tyler Johnson. They lose Antoine Winfield. They lose Carter Coughlin. It's a it's a lot to replace, and that's kind of what this team was like. Their breakout year wasn't like the Gophers, obviously, but they they had a lot to replace. So, um, they replaced Devito with Luke Altmeyer, the Ole Miss transfer. Like I've said a couple times, they replaced, um, Chase Brown with Reggie Love the third, who's been there for a while, and Caden Fagan, and then uh, their offensive coordinator. They went out and promoted their defensive back coach Aaron Henry, who is one of the, um younger uh, position coach or coordinators. I believe he's 35. And so Altmeyer has shown flashes this year, but he struggled mightily at times. Uh, he threw four picks versus Penn State in that uh, 13 to 30 loss. But he has uh, just under 1,700 passing yards, uh, 10 TDs and nine INTs. And he, he's pretty good dual threat. He has 300 rushing yards with three touchdowns. So he's a talented guy. Um, I put him at a pretty similar skill level to Ethan, to be completely honest. He was a guy that I, I was semi high on. Um, I'm impressed by Lane Kiffin's ability to scout quarterbacks. So if he, um, went out and recruited him, he has to be a pretty good talent. And if he, uh, transferred then it, the, the talents there is basically what I'm saying, but um, as for Chase Brown, their running back situation has not been the same. I think that's a big reason why they've struggled. Um, they have an inconsistent quarterback in a very okay running game to lean back on. Fagan and Love the third have combined for uh, three, 630 yards and five touchdowns. And, I mean, Chase Brown had almost – I think he had over 2,000 rushing yards last year. So, through uh, eight games in nine weeks to have that much, um, not great. And the defense has taken a bit of a step back. So they've allowed 27.8 points per game, which is 84th best in the country. And when you do that in the Big Ten West, you're not going to compete. You got to have 
an elite defense like Iowa and Minnesota have had the past couple of years, like Wisconsin is starting to have again, you, you got to make stops and they haven't been doing that. So that's why they've been losing these games. But again, to reiterate the talents there. So as for the people they got on their team now, talking about Jerzon Newton, um, he's been one of the best players in college football, 82.9 PFF grade, 31 total pressures from the interior which is unbelievably impressive. 28 tackles on the season. So um, he is, I think, pretty consensus, the best interior defensive lineman in the country. Um, So he'll probably hear his name called pretty early next year in the NFL draft. But he will not play in the first half versus the Gophers. He had a targeting penalty against Wisconsin, which is two weeks ago now. But he will be out for the first 24 minutes versus Minnesota. And I, that's certainly something worth noting because if the Gophers establish the run in the first half and then you get him back, it, you're still got a lot of guys playing on their back heels, even if you got the got him. So they they got to come out fast in this game because obviously a defensive tackle is not going to completely change your team, but it can affect other players on your team, which has a big impact. So uh, the number two defensive tackle us move into the number one role. And that messes up your whole D line, which messes up your whole linebacking core, and then you got more pressure on your secondary. So, um, you can uh, uh, defensive tackles not going to shift the betting odds, but you know it's big, especially when it's your best player on your team. So, and in a division with a lot of talented running backs, run first offenses, we got uh, obviously Darius Taylor, Braylon Allen, um, Caleb Johnson, a lot of talented running backs. Isaiah Williams is arguably Illinois' best offensive player, and they're probably the only team in the Big Ten West that their wide receiver is their best offensive player. Um, He has 46 catches on the year for 562 yards and a touchdown, um, and making their defense have a little different dynamic than it's had in years past. Um, He has a PFF grade of 74.1. He's their highest graded offensive player by nearly five points. The next guy's like 69 and a half or something. So uh, when their offense has had success this year, it's been because of Isaiah Williams. And he's kind of the straw that stirs the drink here. So um, they definitely, he their offense goes as he goes. So um, especially in this game, I, that's going to be a big matchup. Justin Wally versus him. Even though he doesn't shadow, there will be a lot of matchups. Trayvon Jones can't let up the big play. Against Michigan State, Trayvon Jones let up that one big play. Uh, can't have that in this game because um, Illinois' biggest favor in this game is they have an extra week to prepare. Um, so while they'll be without Newton for the first half, their team was able to get healthy and find themselves as a team because um, they, they went through a rough stretch. They... Big Ten West is pretty unrealistic now because they don't they are three and five, so that means they're one and four in the conference. Am I yeah, one and four because Toledo and FAU were two, two of their wins. So, um, yeah, the, the Big Ten West isn't possible really for them right now. So it's tough for a team, but Bielma's a good coach, so he's going to motivate them somehow. And it's figuring out, hey, you want to play in a bowl game? We need to finish the year strong. So um, they're regrouped as a team now heading into this week out of the bye week. And I expect this game to look a lot like any game in the Big Ten West. It'll be a low-scoring dogfight, and whoever makes the fewest mistakes will come out with a win. It'll be a lot like the Iowa game. There'll be a little bit more offense probably because Illinois' defense isn't as good and uh, their offense isn't as bad. So um, it'll, it'll be played in the 20s, not the teens, but – it, it, it'll be a tough, hard-fought game. And while they're allowing a lot of points to the team, um, a lot of those have come on turnovers and special teams because they're still only allowing 273 and a half yards per game in total offense. So that's still really low. So they're still a solid defense. But it, again, it's a discipline thing. So it, it, this game will come down to discipline. It's whoever makes the fewest penalties, whoever has the fewest turnovers, it's going to win. And that's how you win Big Ten West football. And that's how they beat Iowa. That's how they beat Nebraska. And 
That's why they lost to Northwestern. They started making mistakes. You can't make mistakes. It's not the team that out duels the other one. That's not how this game is going to be. It's it, it's a interesting brand of football. We all know that, but it's it's whoever uh it, it's whoever doesn't make a mistake, which is which is such a weird way to play the game. But like I said in the Iowa game, like I said in all, in all these Big Ten West games, there's going to be a handful of plays that decide this game. Ethan's going to have a throw here or throw there that he has to make it. The Gophers are going to win. Um, and Illinois, Altmeyer is going to have a throw here or throw there that he has to make if Illinois is going to win. And a big turnover, it's going to happen in this game. Minnesota has to be on the right side of it. Big special teams play, it's going to happen in this game. Minnesota needs to be on the right side of it. All that happened in the Iowa game, and we are on the right side of it. And obviously the fair catch, we were on the right side of it. The uh, Tyler Newbin, he had an interception. We were on the right side of that. It's it's those things that matter in these these games that you have to be on the right side of it, and that's those are the things that that Iowa and Wisconsin have been on the right side of for the past decade. So that's why they play in the Big Ten championship. So, um, the Gophers need to do that in this game, and they'll likely get both Darius Taylor and Zach Evans back from injury. Not a hundred percent confident in that, but. If they do, that'll add a wrinkle to this offense. Uh, now with Jordan Newbin at the helm, um, we kind of touched on how the running back room will look now, but uh, that's a big that's a big get getting both those guys back. And ultimately, one of these teams is five and three, and one's three and five, but I think they're virtually identical. Um, and they're very similar top to bottom roster wise. Two coaches on a similar tier. And I mean, I, in my prediction for go for hole, I gave Illinois the edge because if you go down everything, I think they're very similar teams. And I'm going to give the edge to a team that has an extra week to prepare. Obviously, I want the Gophers to win, and I definitely think they can. But um, they, I just think that all their luck might have came in that Iowa game. So I hope I'm wrong. But I, I think this is going to be a tough game. So I'm I'm going into Saturday afternoon with the expectations of really needing to play their best to get a win. So if they do, I'm going to be thoroughly um, impressed, and I'm not going to be let down. But if they don't, I'm that, see that's what you got to do as a sports fan. Sometimes be realistic how hard it might be because it, it makes you way less emotional after the game. And I'll be really happy if they win, but you know I won't be incredibly down if they lose because I know it's a tough matchup. So, um, they need this game to stay alive in the Big Ten West. They really do. I win Wisconsin are gonna keep winning these games. At least I think they will. Um, I with the Ohio State game, I don't think they have room to trip up against Illinois or Purdue. Um, they they have the especially with Ohio State and Wisconsin at the end of the year, but. Um, so they need this game. I think they can get this game, but yeah, it'll be it'll be a fun matchup. It'll it'll be classic Big Ten West football. And so I guess before I let you go, talk about the schedule release. The Big Ten officially released their schedule for the 2024 season. Now with Oregon and Washington in the fold, USC and UCLA already there. We, we know who the Gophers playing and when they're playing. So. They open the year at home versus North Carolina, August 29th. A um, very interesting game because uh, Drake May is likely gone. Still a tough matchup. And then they got Rhode Island, Nevada, two programs that should be wins. But Rhode Island, very good FCS program. Very odd that they scheduled this game. Um, Nevada is struggling uh, FBS program, one of the uh, worst teams in the country this year. But so – Two winnable non-conference games and then a good test to open the year. So, and they go, uh, they host Iowa early in the year, rare October, rare September game, and then they go at Michigan. So that's a tough stretch start the year, and then they go, uh, UCLA, UC, U, USC, UCLA, USC at home, UCLA on the road. So that's a tough start to the season. That's. We're off the, obviously so much can happen from now and then, um, but it's those are four programs that are in really good spots. And Iowa, that's going to be in a weird transition with their offensive coordinator. 
but they got Cade McNamara already coming back. So it's a tough start to this season. Then you get a bye. Then you get Maryland. It will be uh, having a new quarterback. And then you go to Illinois. Tough game. Two Rutgers. That looks like it'll probably be a tough game. And then you go at home Penn State at Wisconsin. So it's a tough schedule. There's uh, really no uh, gimmies out. There's never a gimme, but Rhode Island and Nevada, outside of that, the there's no Rutgers and Northwestern of the past. Uh, we all know that Northwestern's always tough, but and Rutgers is no longer Rutgers. They're they have six wins and uh, they're playing in bowl games now. So uh, getting them on the road isn't a huge uh, cupcake, but uh, it's an interesting schedule. A lot of people obviously have some opinions. Um, it'll be. I think I might go to the game in Pasadena and Tumper, which would be so cool. I think I'm going to that game or the Michigan game. Still need to figure it out, but um, should be incredibly cool. Um, and yeah, I mean, 2024. You're talking a schedule that's uh nine months away or whatever it is now. That uh, so much can happen, and the Gophers could have a different quarterback now. That I don't think they will, but you you get what I'm saying. And all these teams. Right now, the only team on there I think you know who their quarterback's going to be is Iowa, is Cade McNamara. Uh, UCLA, you could say Dante Moore will probably be their quarterback next year, but Drew Aller will probably be Penn State's quarterback, and Gavin Wims- Wimsad will probably be Rutgers. So four of the teams, you can have a pretty good guess of who their quarterback's going to be, but again, that could change. It, but um, And I mean, all those teams will probably retain their head coach, except maybe Nevada. Um, and you never know with Michigan. I, that's it's going to be a crazy off season with Michigan. So, um, I think it's a tough schedule. And that's life in college football now. That's life in the Big Ten now. I think all all the schedules are going to be tough. It's going to be tough every year. So that's why you got to appreciate the wins when they're there. So appreciate the win against Michigan State last week against Iowa the week before, and appreciate this week against Illinois. Um. Because it's going to continue to change. That's how life is. It's all over the place. And uh, you, you got to appreciate this season as it is. Uh, I didn't want to spend too much time on the schedule because uh, that's an off-season topic. But um, it is interesting. So, um, as always, I appreciate everyone for listening. Uh, row the boat, Skyuma, and go Gophers.